Today, I'm going to tell you how I broke 90 in my golf game. What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. You know that I enjoy doing some golfing, and I have golfed actually probably 40 times in 20 years, which means I don't do it that often. I used to get together with guys just every once in a while, a couple times a summer, just to have a good time and do a little golfing, but never took it that seriously until this last summer when it was one of the few things that you could do and I'm laid off, so I got to do it quite a bit. Now, one of the things that I realized here is that it gets very tempting to score as low as possible. And one of the things that I have never done before is break 90. It's one of those thresholds or milestones that I've never really been able to bust through. And it's always kind of gnawed away at me. And I think for a lot of trunk slamming golfers like myself who don't take it too seriously, but do enjoy the game, want to break that mythical barrier of 90 strokes somewhere in the 80s. And this last summer, I did it twice actually and I realized that the key was not just to improve my golf game which is something that you will definitely have to do but the real key that I learned is that we need to stop giving away free strokes to things that we think are insignificant to our game but I want to show you my 11 ways I've got one toe raised up too 11 ways that I have been able to break in 90 in my golf game which have nothing to do with improving your swing. So for a lot of people, you'll say, hey, I just need to take some lessons, get better at my swing, get more consistent, and that's going to help me just muscle through and get the score I want. And you can absolutely do that. But for a lot of us that will shoot in the 90s, a lot of us that are bogey golfers, we just want to get from 95 down to 89. And so there are some ways I think you can get rid of those six extra strokes so that you can break 90. And again, you don't have to worry about improving your swing on this. So, number one, I know this may seem obvious, but clean your clubs. Right here, I have a pretty clean club. I have some ball marks on there, but there are a couple ways to do this. One, a little brush like this, where we have some soft bristles as well as some brass bristles. You can get in there and clean the dirt out. The grooves on the club face are really important for getting the right spin so that you can control those shots, especially those short shots around the green. And so after you take a shot with a club, and you get some dirt on it, you want to clean it off. Or at the end of the round, you want to make sure you're going into a round with clean clubs. The other thing I have here is this club scrub. I really like this. You put some water in there. There's terry cloth inside. You can put your club in here after each shot. So if you take some ground, you just clean it up like that. And now you aren't going to hit with a dirty club. Hitting with a dirty club might not seem like a big deal. But I'm telling you that a clean ball on a clean club face is going to be far more predictable. There are a lot of dump shots, some shanks that you might just chalk up to bad technique that are actually the result of a little clump of dirt or some grass or a slick golf club. So clean up your clubs. That's my first tip. My second tip is know your golf course. So I think a lot of us want to have a good score on a really challenging golf course. And you know what? I'm not too proud to pick one golf course close to me that might be actually pretty easy to play and just go out there and play it repeatedly and know what the right strategy on each hole is, know where to lay up, know how to cut corners and play it really well. And I think that's another big key to playing the course well. Now, if you don't have the opportunity to get to know a course really well, like the back of your hand so that you can play at optimally, I would suggest getting something like this. Now, this is a little Garmin handheld GPS. It's the G30. There's also a G80. I've done a review on that. But what it will do here is it will show you the golf course you're playing with. Now, you can actually use the little layouts of the golf courses on the back of your scorecards to really understand if it's a dog leg left and dog leg right. But one of the things that's really important is just understanding how you should play it. Does it play uphill? Can you cut the corner? Is there water or there hazards? You know, so understanding that course and being strategic about the way you play it is really important. Now, a lot of us can't have a caddy that is familiar with the golf course, but whether you have the GPSs in the carts or you pick up a small device like this, which is a couple hundred bucks, but it'll show you the holes. It will also give you your distances to the greens. So this is really valuable because it'll tell you how far you are from hazards. It'll tell you how far you are from the hole and it will really help improve the game. This little device here is one of the biggest contributors to the improvement of my game that I have had so far. Another option on this is a range finder so that you know if you're 130 or 150 yards away from the pin. Those types of things I think are huge, huge advantages. So don't think that having something like this is actually a crutch. It's actually really useful. And for a lot of pros, don't forget they have a professional caddy there that's telling them the wind conditions and ground conditions and distances so this is like your little caddy light and i would definitely recommend picking one of these up i thought this was a splurge at first but it is absolutely critical to playing your best golf 
Number three, and this little change for me is probably the most significant contributor to the improvement of my golf game, and that is using golf balls with alignment tools on them. So you can see this Callaway Triple Track has three lines here. This was actually my first experience with alignment aids on golf balls, and I love them. Once you're on the green and mark your ball, you can pick up your ball and then align the ball with these lines to where you want to putt. And what I have found here is sometimes I have lined up this ball and then gotten over it and looked down and been like, oh, that can't be right because I am not pointed towards the hole. And then I'll come back and I'll be like, those lines are dead on. And what I realized is that there are a lot of times when I'm over the ball and I think I see the line to the hole, but it's nowhere near close. And these little alignment aids on golf balls have made a huge difference. The one thing that my friends will say about me is that my putting has really improved this year. And it's really not so much my putting. It's just the fact that this has helped me actually putt closer to the hole instead of being an easy 10 or 15 degrees off one way or the other that normally I would think is dead on the money. So you don't have to spend the money to get balls with this triple track line. You can actually pick up these little plastic alignment aids. I'll put links to them in the description. Some of these snap on the balls like this, some of them clamp on, and then you can just take your own Sharpie here and draw a line right down the center and give yourself your own alignment aid. So if you are using a particular ball that doesn't have the best alignment aids on them, you don't have to worry about that. You can make your own with these little tools here. Anyone can do it so your old balls aren't obsolete but these alignment aids are probably the one thing that i think everyone must do and if you watch the professionals on tour you will notice that most of them have alignment aids on their golf balls so the pros are doing it too number four and this one goes along with it but this is my adele putter and my recommendation here is get a putter that you align correctly and i would actually try this on just some flat turf in your golf superstore whatever it is just try a handful of different putters and putt the ball and see which ones you can line up and actually putt towards the hole for a lot of us we have a bias left or right and sometimes even though we think we're lined up straight to a hole we will see the ball veer off one way or the other and that's really in a big way because of the way our eyes see the alignment on the putter and so don't necessarily buy a putter because you like the looks or you like the brand i would definitely try out putters and it might be a 15 dollars putter for you that works great it might be a 300 dollars putter for you that works great but find the putter that you align correctly that feels good in your hand that you can figure out how to dial in because if you think about 18 holes on a golf course and you two putt every hole that's 36 strokes you are taking with your putter if you are shooting a 95 on the regular you are shooting about a third of those strokes with this club right here so this to me is the most important club in the bag and if you can make sure that you're limiting yourself to 36 strokes with a putter i think that's pretty good but for a lot of us we might sneak in that three putt or that four putt because we're just using a putter that's not right for us and so if you get the right putter and you go from 40 putts down to 36 putts there's four strokes back to your game so get the right putter for you all right number five now some people might disagree with this some people might give you some different distances but to me i suggest practicing that six foot putt i think people are putting incorrectly and for a lot of us trunk slammer golfers who are not actually hitting the driving range before we golf a lot of us are just throwing a few balls on the putting green and putting them around for a lot of us we're trying to hit that 30 foot putt and put it as close to the hole as possible and then we're doing it again but I think the mistake here is that we should be practicing that five or six foot putt. Most of the putts for us, especially those second putts after a long putt, might be five or six feet away. And so I think we miss a lot of those when we need to be sinking those. So this little putting cup right here came in a two pack. It's super cheap. It's just a little molded plastic. And what I would do is get some of these, get some balls, putt on your carpet, and practice that five or six foot putt. Get really good with that so that when you're on the golf course, you are sinking those five and six footers. Because if you're missing those five and six footers, even by a few inches, that's just another stroke on your golf game. So if you start sinking those five and six footers, you're gonna easily start sinking those three and four footers and everything within your height of the hole is gonna be sinkable for you. And so that's going to eliminate another few strokes off of your game. Practice with this. A little cheap practice putting cup like this can be really useful for mastering that five or six foot putt. All right, number six, and that is trim your driver. So I have a driver shaft here. I have been practicing with a lot of different driver shafts. This is one of the many shafts that I ordered and I cut them down to various lengths to try them out. Now for me, my ideal length might not be your ideal length, but what I think most people get wrong here is that they buy clubs off the shelf and they don't get them fitted. But at 45 and a half inches, I think generally that's too long. And they make the clubs long because 
it's easier to trim them down than it is to add length. Now, many pros actually shave their drivers down about an inch to increase their control and accuracy. So if many pros are shaving their drivers down a little bit, why aren't many amateurs? And that's just because I think we don't wanna go through the effort of taking off an inch and having it re-gripped. It's not that expensive. And I think just taking off a half an inch or an inch for most people will add a lot more accuracy to their drives. You'll hit it in the sweet spot more. So trim your driver, get more shots in the fairways reduce those big hooks or slices and get a little more consistency without trading off a lot of distance the inch difference here will maybe only equate to a couple yards on the drive but might bring in your dispersion by 20 or 30 percent those drives that are going into the rough might be in the short rough or in the fairway so trim your drivers all right number seven and that is mark your tees for your driving now here is just a little plastic tee it's super durable what i mean by this is that i think when you go to the driving range and you get those little rubber tees they're always the same height and you just get used to hitting the ball off of them and you get pretty consistent and then when you go to the golf course you tee up your ball and then you get underneath it and you sky that thing or you hit the ball really low on the face and it stays really low and the problem here is that when you start pushing a tee into the ground we aren't usually very consistent with how high that tee is sitting and so what i would suggest here is to figure out what your ideal height is and then mark the tee now it can be as simple as taking this tee and a sharpie and measuring and putting a little stripe on every tee that you have so that you push them into the ground at exactly the same height to make it more consistent now if you want to get slick with it you can buy this little product here t correct and it's a little device that you stick the tee into and then you can band your tee with these little holes here and a marker. And that'll put a little band on your tee at the same height. I think marking your tees at the same height will make you far more consistent with your drives. How many times have you just gotten a little under it or a little over it? Because instead of the consistent driving range tee, you are teeing up just a quarter inch too high or too low sometimes. So a little product like this will help you make sure that you're consistent every time. All right, number eight get proficient with the right wedge and what i mean by this is that many of the shots that us trunk slammers have are from right off the side of the green maybe 10 yards out 20 yards out and you need a chip and a putt to get in and i think investing in a really good wedge that feels good for you that you can hit consistently that you know exactly how to flop onto the green that you know how far it's going to roll out or check up is really important now these are my two favorite wedges i have tried a number of wedges many of the ones by callaway some of them i just could not get very good with but this is the callaway mac daddy cavity back wedge and it is just so forgiving it's a game improvement wedge but it's perimeter weighted here and it just feels very playable i have played with this almost all summer long and it is clearly the best wedge i've ever played and has significantly improved my game now more recently i bought this wedge because i was intrigued this is the mizuno es21 it's a new wedge i haven't played it as much but in the recent rounds that i played with it i really really like it it's got a very large head but the center of gravity is actually smack dab in the middle of the club face which also makes it kind of forgiving but for us average golfers we tend to line up the ball right in the middle of the club face now on wedges the center of gravity is actually heel side and so for most of us we're setting up wrong i think to wedges but this one will allow you to play the wedge just like you expect it so i have really enjoyed this and i've played it really well and this will probably be the wedge that goes into my bag but between these two wedges mizuno is about 200 bucks and the callaway is about 120 bucks neither of these are discount wedges but that doesn't mean you can't find a 20 or 30 dollar wedge that you just happen to play really really well and will improve your short game too all right number nine and that is switch your irons to one length irons or single length irons that means that all the irons in your bag are exactly the same length usually the length of a seven iron and why that's important is because when the iron length changes from club to club your swing changes just a little bit and sometimes if you swing a three iron and then swing a nine iron the swing plane is going to change a lot and so you have to remember and have muscle memory for a lot of different iron shots even though you don't play those shots very often in fact if you think about someone who plays bogey golf maybe all of your irons three through nine will only be played for half of the strokes so 45 46 strokes will be played with six or seven clubs it's actually a fairly low number of swings that you'll take with your irons and so having irons of a single length all the same length means you only have to remember one swing and you can play all of those now this is the orlamar intercept single length clubs this was my first set of single length clubs that i bought they're only about 220 dollars a set and that's a really good value and it was really what sold me on single length irons now if you do want to splurge a little bit now you can go up to these premium clubs these are the cobra 
plus speed zone single length irons and these are the irons that i'm playing right now and they are just super forgiving and just a delight to play and for me being able to practice one swing, whether it's my five iron, my seven iron, my nine iron, my pitching wedge, and have the same swing for all those irons just means it's fewer variables to me on the golf course. It's fewer opportunities for me to be just slightly uncomfortable with my swing or my setup, maybe miss hit a club that I just don't hit very often. So single length irons, you don't have to spend a lot of money to get them because you do have some options here, but man, they have been a game changer for me. They have certainly helped me out with a couple strokes around. Number 10, get a premium golf ball. I know this is something that I actually personally struggled with for a long, long time. I just wanted to play cheap, inexpensive golf balls that I wasn't afraid to lose. But I realized here that based on the data, the little improvements that you get with premium golf balls sometimes add up to a lot. If you're getting two or three extra yards with a premium golf ball, for every fairway or rough shot, two extra yards over 45 shots, which means you are getting 90 more yards, which might be one stroke difference. Now, in many cases, a premium golf ball might actually add more accuracy and distance and controllability. And so just eliminating one extra 90 stroke shot might be just the tip of the iceberg. You might actually be able to save up to eight strokes for 18 holes based on some of the data that I've seen. Now. A lot of people will say the Titleist Pro V1 is the best golf ball. Now, you can get those, but they are pretty expensive. But you can save some money by buying something like this. These are refurbished Pro V1s, and from everything that I can tell, they might have some slight differences from brand new Pro V1s, but they play virtually the same, and they are half the price. The other golf ball that I really love are these TaylorMade TPX5 five layers. These are incredible golf balls. They're slightly cheaper than the Pro V1s, but these are some of the best golf balls I've ever played. And if you go back to my earlier tip, they also have alignment aids for putting so this golf ball here is the one i have been playing almost religiously for the past year and i really really love it so increasing your spend from a bargain basement golf ball to a premium golf ball just might save you more strokes than you think and number 11 is gap your clubs and know your distances so what we have here are a bunch of irons that we tend to think we know how far they fly. And I can't tell you how many times I've gone up to a tee on a par three, and because everyone's hitting an eight iron, someone grabs their eight iron because they think that's the right club, when they maybe should be hitting a seven iron, or a six iron, or even a five iron. And so I feel like there is this social pressure to play the club that you think you should play or play a club that you think goes a certain distance, but you aren't totally sure. And how you can get the exact distances on the club is now easier than ever. If you have a PGA Tour Superstore around you, you can actually rent for $10 for 30 minutes, a practice booth, and just hit a few shots with each of your irons. And it will tell you exactly how far you're hitting them. And you can say, hey, I hit that one pretty good, and now you know, maybe your six iron goes 170 yards. Maybe your five iron goes 155. Maybe your nine iron goes 83, whatever it might be. At least now you'll know exactly how far you hit your clubs. So instead of hitting that shot to the green and it falls 10 yards short or goes goes 10 yards long, now you'll actually be hitting the appropriate club for the right distance. So between knowing on number two your course and knowing those distances, now you'll also know how far these irons fly and you'll be able to take advantage of the knowledge of the course because you'll have the right knowledge for your clubs. So I think that's really important. Go and spend the half hour or an hour to get the distances on your clubs. And don't let your ego decide what you're pulling out of your bag. Let the data decide. All right, if you've stuck with me this long through all 11 tips, one of the things that I will say is that I think each of these could be worth an extra stroke off your game. And so 11 tips, 11 strokes. If you shoot 95, maybe you can shoot an 84 now. If you shoot 100, maybe you can shoot an 89 now. So each of those I think will improve your game. Some maybe more than others. But for those of you that have stuck around to the end of this video, I have a bonus tip for you. And that is number 12, try a chipper. Now this one is by Tour Edge. It's the Hot Launch 4 chipper. And this is like a putter, but it has the loft of essentially a seven iron, but it's a chipper that you use with a putting stroke generally around the green to bounce a ball up and run it to the hole. And for years, I have been avoiding using a chipper because I thought they were kind of a gimmick club that was almost like cheating. But I tell you what, when you set up with a putting stroke on your chipper and you chip, 
one of the things that happens is that ball stays right on line. So instead of grabbing a wedge that maybe you don't feel that proficient with, and sometimes you hit it a little long, hit it a little fat, maybe it goes off to the left or right a little bit more than you think, a lot of times these don't go as straight as you might expect. And one of the big problems with it is that many times when I was chipping out of deep rough, I would catch the ball a little fat and leave it a little short and leave myself a second unnecessary chip. So that's when I fell in love with chippers because these have a lot of weight down in the head so they cut through the grass. They are generally flat face like a putter so when you set up square to it it goes right where you're aiming it and these have saved me a number of strokes i have used these 30 yards off a of green to put it on the green i have used these a few inches off the green i've really come to love chippers and have made space in my bag for one so a chipper like this might cost you 60 70 80 bucks for a decent one but you can find entry level chippers from acer pine meadow golf or lamar or even Tour Edge that might only be 20, 30, or 40 dollars that give you a huge improvement in your short game. So I would definitely add a chipper to your bag as well. So I think if you're shooting in the 90s like I was as a trunk slammer, as a recreational hobbyist golfer, I think if you use these tips, you'll find yourself shooting in the 80s and finally breaking through that mythical 90 barrier. And it's really just mentally rewarding to break 90. So if you want to do that, try these. I will put links to all the products that I recommended in the description below, as well as a link to an Amazon page where I have grouped them all together as well. So hopefully you can find the right products for you. And if you want to treat me to a free round of golf with you, just let me know. That's it. Peter Von Panda, out. Yeah.